This is probably going to be a very emotional video for you to watch. Let me explain to you why that is. Listen, anytime you and I go to two different places in our lives, everybody, you have a lot of people that have lived with you, mom, dad, brother, sister, friends, wife, boy, all this stuff you've had, but there's only one person that's lived with you every second of your life, and that's you, right? We get emotional thinking about our kids, our mom, dad, but there's a whole different emotional aspect when you go back and you think about the six-year-old version of you and what you were thinking about. Remember, you know how you take a picture and you look at the picture when you were six and it has a fear in their eyes and you're afraid. You're like, man, what were you thinking about? You know, what, what was this kid thinking about? I have a picture of myself. I look at it. It's turmoil, Iran. I'm like, kid, what are you thinking about? And I get emotional. And on the flip side of it, you go and think about the 40-year-old version of you. 60, 70, that gets you emotional. Because what is life going to be like? Am I going to reach my full potential? That is a scary thought, by the way. You know why? Because no one else matters in this world when it comes down to that. It's only you versus you. Nobody does. Not your competitors. Nothing. And so think about life as a video game. You ever played a video game before? Say Mario. Say you play an RPG role-playing game. The whole idea of the video game is to do what? Is to move up another level another level. And as the levels go higher, the game gets tougher, but you also become tougher, right? As you're leveling up. Can you imagine playing a video game with 20 levels and never getting past level five? Can you imagine that? You know what's crazy? Most people play life like that. They never get past level five. So I told you it could be emotional here today. My goal today with this video, I only have 20 minutes with you. I wish I had a whole day with you, two days with you. My idea with this video today, so to get you to start thinking about what your potential is, what is your true capacity? Why not someone like you wake up today and say, you know what? It's about time I go seek my capacity rather than just living a regular life. So, you know, a lot of times people tell you and say, well, you got to reach your full potential. And people say, what is potential? I don't know what that even means. You got to reach your capacity. I'm going to explain to you three different things today, and then I'll give you my points at the end. One is your capacity may be different than somebody else's capacity. That's number one. Two, what happens why we're afraid to reach our capacity? We'll talk a little bit about that in a very simple way. Three, what are the areas of capacity that I really have? I don't even know what that really means. I'll break down for you, and I'll give you some tips. I could put 60 points here, but I'm going to simplify and just give you some of the points that maybe you haven't heard of before. So let's get right into it. Look. You have to accept a couple things here. This is an example of three different human beings, each with a different level of capacity. This person's capacity, the person number three, this person's capacity makes him right here. He doesn't have or she doesn't have his capacity, okay? This person can reach at their maximum capacity and give everything in life and above and beyond everybody else in a certain industry and they can never compete with this person's capacity. And then you have these guys who have more talents than other people, who have more access to resources than other people. Their capacity is higher, and that's okay. You're watching this right now saying, Pat, I kind of don't like that. What do you mean you don't like that? Well, I, I feel I can be anything in life because my mom told me I can be anything in life. Your mom lied. You can't be anything in life. You can't be LeBron James. You cannot be Usain Bolt. You can't. That has to do with the body. Let me explain what I mean by this in a sports example, and then you can understand it for yourself. Red means somebody who is an underachiever. Say this is you. You stay here, you're an underachiever. Blue means you're an achiever. You did good. You went and achieved at the level that you should have. Green is what you were supposed to do, you did, but you took it to a whole different level. And you became an overachiever where no one expected you to reach you reached. That's a whole different idea. Let me explain. Again, here we can talk about a guy named Muggsy Bogues. He gets drafted in the NBA. He is 5'3", 135 pounds. Let me say this one more time. He's 5'3", 135 pounds. He plays 14 seasons in the NBA at 5'3", 135 pounds, averaging eight assists a game. He is an overachiever because no one in the history of the NBA has ever been 5'3". Shortest player ever. That guy goes right up here as an achiever. He's an overachiever. 
Let's put it over here. Shaq, most people would say, is an overachiever. I don't put Shaq as an overachiever. I put Shaq as an achiever. Why? You're 7'1", okay? You got big hand size, 24 feet, massive, strong, powerful. You can push everybody around. Shaq could have been the greatest basketball player of all time. Not one of the greatest, not top 10 greatest. He could have been the greatest. We've never seen a human being like that before in the history of sports. Comes in 7'1", 320, 340 pounds, and he's got hops and he's fast. He could have been the greatest. Off season, he put on weight. Never practiced his free throws as much as he could have been. What if Shaq practiced his free throw and started shooting 73% instead of 59%? What if Shaq, you know, added another footwork during the time he was playing? He was playing against Hakeem Olajuwon. What if he went and got a couple other footworks? What if he did better conditioning during off season? What if he took care of himself? Maybe Shaq could have been averaging 38 points a game. Maybe Shaq could have been doing 16 rebounds. Maybe Shaq could have been doing 71% uh, percent free throw shooting. What happened there? See, to me, he's an achiever. But Muggsy Bokes is an overachiever. But even though Muggsy Bokes is an overachiever, he'll never be a Shaq. Because Shaq at achiever is still better than Muggsy Bokes. However, when Muggsy Bokes goes to sleep at night, he needs to know that he reached He's an overachiever in life, and everybody in his industry respects him. That's the part. So now for you watching, it's like, well, Pat, how do I know what my capacity is? What is my potential? You generally know if you're more talented than most people around you. You, do, you generally know. But you know it. You know it if you are. You generally know if you're just a simple person in your entire life, you've just been a simple person. Maybe your level's going to be not that crazy. You generally know. But regardless where you're at, you have your capacity, okay? And you get to choose what you want to be. So now you may say, Pat, explain to me capacity. What is capacity? Let me explain to you. Capacity is your day. How do you maximize your day? What is your capacity for today? Did you maximize your capacity today? Do you maximize on a daily basis? Or do you wing half the time with your days? Your capacity is your network. Do you really take advantage of your network, your contacts you have, the people you know? Do you maximize it? Do you have your capacity where you know who to call, favors, give them favors, connect, get these two that would work good together? Do you maximize your network, your money that you have, or does it just kind of sit there? Do you maximize the tools that you have around you, social media? You know, this, this thing is purely a tool. This is nothing more than a tool. Do you maximize this tool? Do you maximize the social media stuff that's out there? Are you using it or not? I don't know. You know it. Do you maximize your talents? Your talents. The abilities that you have. If you were to ask the top five people that know you very well, and that you would ask, what are my most talented, uh, uh, top five talents that I have? People will say, you're an amazing communicator. Let me tell you, you're so intuitive. You can always read somebody and know if that person's a good person or not. You always know if somebody, somebody else you trust or not. Your intuition is amazing. Man, you are so good when it comes down to making people feel good. You're so good with math. You're so good with science. You're so good with this. People will tell you what you're good at. You know it. You've heard it multiple times in your life before. Are you maximizing your talents? Are you really doing that? Last one. Your advisors. You have advisors. You have mentors. I run a company with 8,500 agents right now. We're in 49 states. I have uh, 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 six chairman's council, 11 senior vice presidents, uh, a few hundred marketing directors, right? But not everybody's using each other's advice. We'll do a conference call on a weekly basis. And one, not everybody will ask questions. A conference call with 12 people. Not everybody asks questions. Why are they not leveraging their advisors? Why are they not asking questions? Why is that? Is it ego? I can't ask anything. Why? They're not using their capacity. So capacity in life isn't just your talent that you have in your life. It's everybody around you. Everything you have access to. That's capacity. So now let's answer the question. Why don't people reach their capacity? It's very simple. Remember how earlier I told you life is like a video game and you got to go to the next level? This, this part's going to make a lot of sense to you. And it's going to be difficult for you to embrace this. But let me explain it to you. Here's what it is. Everybody in life, if these are levels, at some level, you're in the top 20%. Let me explain. Everybody is in the top 20% of some level. Here, here's what I mean. Say you play basketball. You could be the best basketball player if you play against seventh graders and you're a senior. But you're the best basketball player. No one can push you around. But you're not getting better. But you're in the top 1% of basketball players 
amongst 13 year olds, you're 18. By the way, most people treat their careers that way, just so you know that. Most people are 18 year olds playing basketball against 13 year olds. You ever hear a senior in high school that got into a fight with a freshman? What do you call that senior? A bully. Most people treat their careers that way. Most people with higher potential, they're lazy, they don't put a lot of work. Believe me, I mentor a lot of people that I've seen here. Their capacity is here, but they're secretly so lazy. They don't put the work in because they can wing it and they're still beating this guy. So they think they're doing so well, but they're not. They're just bullying somebody below them. They're not good. They can't compete with somebody at their own level. No way. They'll get smashed by somebody that's really wanting to reach their capacity at their level. So they like to be around guys like this because it validates how good they are. Very interesting place to be. That's a person that never goes to the next level. Because every time you go to the next level, you're in the bottom 80%, and it sucks. Every time. Every single time you go to a new level, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do with this. You know how you play a video game, you get to a new level, you lose, 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 lose. But the level prior to that, you know, I can do this with my eyes closed, pa, 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 pa. boom. Next level, you lose. Takes you 30 times before you go to the next level. So you don't like that level, you like to go to the level behind you. That's life. Every single time you level up to get to your capacity, you suck at the next level. We hate sucking at any level. You and I, we hate sucking. We had a visit this last week. I was in LA for a poker tournament. We had Kevin Hart that was hosting a charity tournament and we gave away $25,000 to charity. I had Kevin Hart there, I invited Phil Hellmuth and I had Michael Francis and 20 other friends. We had some of our executives. I rented this $75 million penthouse, 26,000 square feet, and we had a good time. Everybody showed up, we're playing a game. Afterwards, we go to dinner. I think we went to Fleming's. One of the conversations came up and one of the guys said, you know what's crazy in life? You make the money, and then once you make it, you're like, oh man, I made it, what do I do now? The journey is what's exciting. I said, I disagree. He says, what do you mean you disagree? I said, you only feel you got there if you stop there. <laughs> if you keep going to the next level, you suck at the next level. You're not doing anything at the next level. So here's what that example is. Here's a human being. They've reached here. They're beating most people. They think they've reached it. They have no idea that there's that level there because there's fear. And every time you and I, believe me, I know this from experience, every time people that tell you, oh my gosh, you're so amazing, you're so this, you're so great, wow, Patrick, wow, Johnny, wow, Steve, wow, Bobby, boom, you believe it. But you're not there yet because you haven't reached your capacity yet. Are you really maximizing these things? Are you really fully? Yes? Huh, I don't know about that. We were talking earlier, and for me, when I was putting this content together, O'Neill and I were talking, I said, you know, a lot of people may think I'm an overachiever. In my eyes, I'm an achiever still. I am still an achiever. But Pat, you run a business, you didn't have a degree, you come from a divorced family, you lived in Iran with a war, you lived in a refugee camp, you went to high school, 1.8 GPA. You know, what do you mean you run a YouTube channel with a million subs, insurance companies growing? Nobody expected you to do any of this stuff. Yes, but in my mind, I don't care what the world is saying. In my mind, I don't want to believe I'm an overachiever. Because if I'm an overachiever, I've reached it. I don't want to think that I've reached it. I want to know there's 10 more levels to the game. Why am I going to play a game that I'm almost finished the game? I want a new level. I want two more levels. I want to know there's 20 more levels above me. You want to know there's 20 more levels above you? What if you meet the best version of you? Remember how earlier I told you this is an emotional video because you go back and look at that six-year-old picture and you remember that kid had dreams? You remember that kid had dreams? Remember what that kid thought he could do, she could do? Do you remember that day? You remember that day. I remember that day. Fear. There's a walk. I remember every single time people tell me, what's the earliest memory of your childhood. I was six years old. I was going down the street. We lived in a Chiavana Hojat, street Hojat. I was walking to the left to pick up milk from the side. When I went over there, I walked by myself. I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I remember exactly the street I was on. I was so afraid. So afraid. I was just like, oh my God, I don't know why. One day, I don't know why. One day, I just want to, God, one day, please, I don't, but I'm afraid. Like this whole emotion. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Like this isn't something you can act. You know it. I know it. But can you imagine living your whole life never experiencing that dream, that potential, that capacity? What a life. What a waste. You know that already. You don't wake up every single day wanting to contribute to another TV commercial or another ad on YouTube or Facebook or any of this other stuff? No. You wake up every day, it's like, man, what if? 
What if I give it? Never be afraid of sucking at the next level. So let me give you some pointers. This is how I process capacity for myself. And hopefully this, in, this can help you out. By the way, I have a bunch of points here. Okay, let me read you some of the points here that I'm not going to cover with you here. Okay? Write down your goals. Avoid the realistic and seek the potential. Take massive action. Stop being, stay persistent. You know, visualize imagination. Stop apologizing. 100% responsibility. Focus on a bigger picture. These are all right. They're all right. But you can watch them and read them in all these other books. I've written about them myself in other videos and other books I've written. But I want to give you stuff maybe you haven't heard of before. Number one, it must matter to you. It has to matter to you. Let me put it to you this way. This, whatever mine is, like this, tears. I can, I, immediately I can start crying thinking about it, okay? Because it matters to me. Yesterday we're at Thanksgiving dinner. Merle asked a question because she was trying to announce something to us. She says, oh, what are you most grateful for? Everybody gives her great gratitude. My turn is coming up. What do you want to say? Family, this, this, that. I said, honestly, for me, it's the first time in my life where I feel there's some stability. I said, what do you mean? I said, I've never had stability in my life. What do you mean you never had stability in your life? In Iran? Never. Germany refugee camp? Never. Living in the U.S., parents divorced, back and forth, seeing my dad, living with my mom, there was no stability there. Joining the army? No stability there. Coming out of the army, trying to figure out what it is to be a civilian, getting a job, trying to pay off my $49,000, there's no stability there. Getting into financial services, trying to figure out how to sell all this stuff and running a lease, changing offices, money, there's no stability. They're starting an insurance company at 30 years old where the average insurance agent is 59 and the average CEO is 65 years old. There's no stability there. There is no Middle Eastern CEO there. Everybody's white with nice degrees. And I'm not one of those guys that connects with everybody. And I don't like to be a victim and feel sorry for myself and say, well, Patrick, it's because you're Iranian. This is why if I was white, I don't like those kinds of alibis and excuses. I didn't have any stability. I didn't have money backing me up. Yes, we raised $10 million last year, but I was last year at 39 years old. I didn't use anybody's money. I saved my own money. I said, I'm going to get my own money. If you're going to pull this off, you got to be able to pull it off. I don't like debt. I don't like owing people money. You're going to be able to pull it off. No stability. First time in my career, I'm 40 years old. I'm experiencing a bit of stability in different aspects of my life. I'm trusting my decision-making process better. You consume my content. You think I know everything. I don't know everything. I'm still learning because I'm seeking this. This is what I'm after. And it matters to me. I'm breathing hard because this, this hurts me. This excites me. This is life to me. This is my heartbeat. I don't know any other way of doing this. This entire day I had to make this content. In my mind, I'm like, oh, this is too emotional for me to make this content. But it matters to me. It has to matter to you. Uh, meeting that 59-year-old person that's reached the capacity you have 59, that's got to matter to you. If it matters to you, you just subtly need a few strategies that benefits you. Number two, there's a difference between initiating and reacting. Listen, there are leaders in life and there are chasers in life. Chasers chase the leader, okay? At some point in your life, you are chasing. Don't get me wrong. At some point in your life, you are chasing. You could be chasing your dad. You could be chasing your mom. You could be chasing your older brother. You could be chasing your older sister, your older friends in school. But there comes to a moment in your life where you got to take initiative. You got to initiate. You can't wait for everybody to re if something happens, then you react to it. You got to initiate. You got to lead. You got to be the lion at one point of your life. You got to say, all this time I've been a cat. All this time I've been a, all this time I've been a, it's time. I'm a lion now. Boom. And when you decide to become one, your wiring has to change. You can't wait for everybody else to do something, then you react to them. You don't go hit the weights because somebody else is hitting the weights. You hit the weights because you're trying to increase your energy. You don't get to work because somebody else is working. You're getting to work because you're leading everybody, because you're a leader, not a chaser. To reach your capacity, you can't be a chaser all the time. Eventually, you have to graduate being a chaser. And some, to, some tells me most of you guys are chasers. Most of you guys are people that are, you know, waiting to react to something happening. Capacity requires you to lead and to initiate. You can't chase and react all the time. Number three, I talk systems a lot. I'm going to talk a lot about systems at our first Vitamin conference here. We'll soon announce it's going to be a three-day conference. I'm going to spend a lot of time with systems with you. But you've got to have systems. Let me explain what systems do. 
In the book, The Power of Habit, the author talks about the fact that our brain is naturally lazy. And our brain likes to come up with systems because it doesn't want to think, it just wants to do, right? There are a lot of things you do and you don't think about. Like you don't have a to-do list, brush my teeth in the morning. It's a system. And you have a system on how you brush your teeth. Think about it. You put the toothpaste on first. Maybe you do a long one, small one. Maybe, I don't know how you do it. Maybe you go like this. Maybe you start off like this. I don't know what you do. We have a system. The way you brush your teeth right now, you have a system on how you do it. Think about it, right? So you no longer think about how to brush your teeth. You're showering. I don't know if you go like this first or you go like his first. I don't know if you go here. I don't know what you do, but you have a system. If you think about how you shower, it's a system. You don't think about the way you do it. Washing your hands. How do you wash your hands? Do you go soap? Boom, boom, boom. Or do you go water, soap, water, boom, boom, boom. Do you go water, you know, boom, 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 soap, boom, boom. What do you do? You have a system. You don't think about it. You've done it a million times. In business, you have to take the stuff that you're thinking about doing, come up with systems so you don't think about it anymore, and it just happens. Everything in life you've got to create systems for. The more systems you have leads me to the next point. You conserve energy. When you conserve energy, that energy is put into the bigger things that gets you to what? Your capacity. But you got to conserve your energy. Let me say it one more time. When you create systems on things that happen, you're not wasting your energy on small stuff. You're investing your energy into big stuff because you're conserving it because you have systems. And then when you put it into the big stuff, Boom, growth happens. I remember when I would be busy, I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? I created a video called How to Strategize as an Entrepreneur. It's my favorite video of all time. It doesn't even have that many views. By far my favorite video of all time. Because when I was coming up as a sales guy, I became a salesman, I'm like, what do I do right now? I don't feel like I have anything to do. Energy, pick up the phone, call clients, pick up the phone, meet with clients, pick up the phone, meet with agents, pick up the phone, get off the internet, stop doing the paperwork, stop doing all this stuff, pick up the phone, go meet with somebody most productive thing I could do is sit right in front of somebody. Touch them. Sell them something. Teach them something. Get some referrals. Connect. Next. What's my productive? That requires energy to be in the conversation, in the moment, when they're telling me I'm listening so I can remember. This guy's birthday is coming up in two weeks. This guy's wife's birthday. He said he likes us. Make a note of it. You're going to send him a card. You're going to send him that brochure from the Jaguar dealership because he likes the Jaguar. You're making notes. You're making notes. Conserving energy so I'm staying in the moment. Make sense? I don't want to waste it because I have systems. Next point, you gotta move on faster. You can't stay in the moment of a loss or a setback for too long. I have this one person that's been trying to get a hold of me all day today. You know why I haven't called this person back? Here's why I haven't called this person back. They had, they're dealing with a crisis today. Last two years, two and a half years, do you realize every six months, they've had a massive crisis? Why? Why? Because every time a crisis happened, Either they lagged fixing the issue so it became bigger, okay? They lagged, or they kept doing the same thing and not realizing it's them that's the mistake, not the other people. How are you having the same issue with five different people? I promise you it's not the people, it's you. So I want to fix this so I can move on faster. If I'm constantly trying to fix everybody, I'm the problem for the rest of my life. I had a loss, they rejected, they canceled, they changed their mind, so what? What can I do right now to conserve it? Can I keep this client? Let me give them a call, Mary, is there anything I can do? What happened, did I say something, did I upset you, did I frustrate you? Was it a misunderstanding? Typically, something happens, please tell me. You know what, Patrick, I didn't understand when you said, I didn't like it when you said this, oh, my apologies, that's not what I meant, this is what I was trying to say. I am so sorry about the fact that you felt that way. Was that really the only thing? Yes. Is there anything I can do to earn your business again? Yes, just the fact that you called, I feel a lot better because I thought my wife was a little bit, oh, Mary, I would never say something like that to offend you. Never. I have so much respect for you and your family and what you've done. You know, I, I'm simply trying to assist you and helping you uh, get you in a better direction. Oh, wow, thank you so much. So uh, based on what we're talking, do I still, have I still earned your business? Yes, great. Let's move forward. So that's like, okay, if I can't, great, I'm moving on. You gotta be able to do it, because if you don't, you won't reach here. You're always gonna be here. You're always gonna be here. Always here. That's your capacity. Next, six, define hard work, okay? A lot of people say, hard work, I'm working 100 hours a week, 80 hours a week. Social media, doing what? What are you doing 100 hours a week? What are you doing 100 hours a week? What are you doing 60 hours? What are you doing 80 hours a week? Define hard work. So when you define hard work, and, and you put hours towards every activity. When I do this, this is 30 minutes. It should take me 30 minutes. If it takes you two hours, you wasted an hour and a half. When I make this phone call, average phone call is six minutes if they pick up. 
38 minutes. What happened there? Why are you overselling? What happened there? When I go and do a drop, I, I do this. This, when I do this, takes this. When I'm doing this, it takes this. Define hard work and put hours and time to every single activity that you do. Whatever that activity is, define it with minutes, with seconds, with hours. Remember, capacity. Do you want to meet your capacity? You got to put it there, right? And last but not least, compete up. Don't be afraid. I said earlier, don't be afraid to suck at the next level. Do not be afraid to suck at the next level. Because the reality part of life is, if you're able to do this, if you're not afraid of any of this stuff, one day you'll be able to say, I reached it. And even when you get in that moment and everybody tells you, that mindset of being an overachiever, the experiences you experience are priceless. It's priceless. And that a habit of you wanting to seek this, you know who also uh, rubs off of that? Everybody that's around you. Your coworkers, your kids, your family, your spouse, your peers. You're going to rub some people the wrong way, and you have to understand why that is. I have a lot of friends that don't like me anymore. They used to love me at one point because I was stuck at this level, and they were here. So they were glad I was making 36 k and they were making 59 k They liked it. The moment I made quarter million, they didn't like me anymore. I had people that were making a half a million, I was making quarter million. They loved me. The moment I started making three million here, they didn't like me anymore. I, I had people that were making three million, I, would make, I was making a half a million. They loved me. They loved me. Great. Then all of a sudden I go to 100 million, they don't like me anymore. They, this is like, and then you have some people like, oh my gosh, you got, dude, what are you doing? I want to learn. Let's go. Hey, I just want to be around, man. Let's go hang out. What can we do? Because then it's like, da, 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 da. That's exciting, right? That's because you're, you're seeking this. And that wiring, if you get this wiring and you start thinking that way, like I said, this is emotional. You may need to watch this whole thing again to actually, cause you watch this video, it came on your phone, you're like, oh, great, my power drop, value tenement. Sick, oh my gosh, this is an emotional video. You can't just watch this video and drive the car. You gotta rewind and take the notes. You gotta experience the moment. And by the way, if you watched it while you're taking notes, turn everything off. Look at your notes. Internalize this feeling right now. Don't let this feeling go. Go with it. Think about it. How are you feeling right now? Are you afraid? What mixed feelings do you have right now? Is it excitement, joy, anxiety, happiness, fear, all combined? Sometimes the best food you eat, that recipe is technical. Sometimes reaching your capacity, that's a technical recipe. That doesn't make any sense. That includes fear and anxiety, and that's okay. It's like the hot sauce of life. Use it. Don't let it go. So now, you watched it, you take notes down, you get to a place, you feel good about it, you're in a good state, second video, I want you to watch this. It's how to build a life plan, it's a one page business plan, click on this, it's that time of the year. One page business plan, write your one page business plan, the goal is capacity. And then once you experience this, I want to know exactly what you're thinking as you're watching this video. I want to know your feelings when you're watching this video. Send me a tweet, at Patrick Bay David. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, click on the subscribe button. Take care. Love you.